Hey guys, today we're just gonna ramble and just talk about and reminisce about the 2000s. Not just the early 2000s, but the 2000s in general. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I just want to make a video for myself because over the past few years I've been watching videos here and there about other people's experience of the you know early 2000s or the 90s or just the 2000s in general and to be honest I want to do a video of my own showcasing it or just talking about it or at least my experience about the 2000s and our experiences may be similar ours may be different it varies between person to person but why the 2000s because the 2000s I was a kid I grew up you'll hear the same like trigger words I guess about how the air was different or the how life was like life was different back then compared to the 2010s and 2020s like for me I'm not a big fan of the 2010s it has its moments but for me the first half of the 2010s I was in high school and the last half I was in college and 2020s now being an adult you know being an adult is hard obviously but the 2020s just doesn't really seem to hit. I know we had the pandemic, but once we're leaving it, things don't, things kind of just don't change, I guess. I don't know. And I know the saying that, oh, you, it's what you make of it, right? Like living in the now, you live life like it's your last. You know, you live every day like it's your last and you make the best of it or whatever. But I just want to talk about the 2000s because once a year, I tend to reminisce and feel nostalgic about the 2000s, like, at least one time a year, you know? Like, and it mostly occurs during the summer. I know now we're in December, but still. And I wanted to make a video just for myself, just as a time capsule, so I can revisit my own video and, I guess, listen to myself talk about how great the 2000s was compared to now. And like I said, it varies from different people to people and it's always going to be a generational thing meaning uh every generation will feel like they have a certain decade that they love like for example there's people now who miss the 80s there's people who miss the 90s there's people who miss the 2000s even the 2010s now okay some people are feeling nostalgic for it hell some people are feeling nostalgic for the 70s and how great that was every year or every generation it, it's a cycle, you know, 2020s right now, we're almost heading into 2024, so we're basically almost heading into ha the halfway point, and personally, I do not like this decade so far, but imagine 10 or 20 years in the future, there's going to be someone saying, oh, I missed the 2020s, okay? Besides the pandemic, there's going to be someone who's going to feel nostalgic for the 2020s. It happens every generation, and yeah, but for me, I missed the 2000s, and some of the stuff that occurred in the 90s overlapped in the 2000s. It wasn't like how when the 2010s hit, some of the leftover remnants of the 2000s bled over to the 2010s. It just felt like once we hit the 2010s, let's just move forward. Let's just, you know, advance our technology and focus on the present and the future, which, you know, in hindsight, that kind of sounds cool because you shouldn't really dwell on the past or whatever but i don't know I, I just wasn't a fan of the 2010s it has its moments but we're just talking about the 2000s and i don't know how long this video is going to be so i will make sure i will put timestamps about each different topic and stuff like that so yeah i guess for this segment we'll just talk about my introduction like I was born in 97, okay, so I guess I'm considered a Zoomer, Generation Z, because 1997 is like the start year, so I guess I'm a first year Zoomer, but I don't really feel that way. I don't know, maybe, but I don't really consider myself as a millennial either, and a couple years ago I just found out about this term called Zillennial, where you're born in the years between 93 according to the internet okay 1993 to 1998 but i'm going to be a little bit more lenient on the year i'm just going to assume 1993 and let's say 1999 or even 2000 it's a zillennial but I'll, i'm going to go with 93 to 99 where you might be too young to be 
considered a millennial, but you feel too old to be considered a Zoomer. And I feel like that's what that's what I am. You know, like don't get me wrong. I you the only social media I use nowadays is Instagram, and I guess YouTube is considered social media. But that's pretty much it. I haven't used anything else anymore. Like Snapchat dropped that so long ago. Twitter, I don't even know how to use it. So I created way back in the early 2010s. I just deleted in the mid 2010s because I don't know how to use it or how it works. But yeah, and I know I'm coming off as a boomer, but I'm apparently Gen Z, you know? I was born in 97, so yeah, stuff like that. I don't know. I, I feel like Zillennial is an accurate description of, or, of who I am. And considering that I grew up, you know, knowing what a floppy disk is. Um, I had VHS tapes growing up. Like, I don't know if kids these days know what a VHS tapes are, or or even cassette tapes, or you know, floppy disks and stuff like that. And I don't even know if they know what an MP3 player is either. So, yeah, I guess I'm just born in that middle ground between, you know technology advancing, you know, and still remnants of stuff in the past. For example, you know, I went outside and played like a, every other kid in the 2000s. I, uh, you know, we would go to our friends' houses, knocked on doors see, to see if they could go outside and play, and we did that stuff. And, and we rode bikes and go on adventures of our own. I don't know what kids or the, this generation is doing these days. Apparently from other people I hear uh, they're on tablets now and they're playing video games, which we did play video games back then, but during the PS1 and PS2 era, uh, online multiplayer wasn't really like a thing. I'm sure you could play online multiplayer on the PS2 if you knew how to set it up and did all that stuff, but it, it was not common, okay? And um, pretty much yeah, but then by the time the PS3 came around, which was also in the 2000s, then um, multiplayer has become common. And the Xbox 360 and all that stuff, and the original Xbox. But yeah, um, that's just how it was. Like, And back then, as you guys can see here, we used to play with toys. I guess the equivalent to toys these days is the iPad or a tablet. For this current generation. It's one of the reasons why Toys R Us died. And I know Toys R Us made a comeback. But they're in like the malls or Macy's stores. Which to me. If Toys R Us does not have their own brick and mortar store. Or a standalone store like they did before. To me Toys R Us is still considered dead. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of grateful that we grew up with Toys R Us. And even KB Toys. You know. Even if KB Toys was on a decline. I'm glad we grew up with that. Same with um. Uh, Saturday morning cartoons that was also on a decline in the 2000s, you know kids WB Saturday mornings um, I remember watching pretty much near the end of Fox Kids when it was dying in the early 2000s and we had Jetix we had uh, I don't know if you guys remember waking up early in the morning to watch ABC family of reruns of Marvel cartoons like X-Men the animated series Spider-Man the animated series you know stuff like that and we had shows like Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and, but yeah, uh, pretty much, um, a lot, like I said before, a lot of stuff in the 90s bled into the 2000s. It wasn't like the 2000s and 2010s where once we hit 2010s, we just kind of moved forward. We didn't dwell on the past, I guess, or worry about it. And back then, smartphones weren't really a thing, you know, like... We had smartphones in like the mid to late 2000s, but you had to be rich to own a smartphone. Most people had flip phones. Uh, I don't know, Blackberries, I think that's what they're called. Uh, and stuff like that. Like, smartphones weren't really a thing. I mean, they were starting to become a thing, but only rich people owned smartphones. It wasn't until the 2010s where smartphones became common. Uh, computers, okay? When we, when we had computers, Every household, at least when I grew up, has um, a central computer, you know, a main desktop where the whole family takes turns using a computer, right? Like, and I know regular shows like a 2010s cartoon, but if you watch regular show, 
um, Mordecai and Rigby who live in the park. They have a central computer. They have that one central computer where each character or person takes turns using the computer. It was kind of like that in the 2000s. And then I think by the time we went to the mid to late 2000s, everyone started having a, an individual laptop. And then now once we're in the 2010s, like everyone either has a gaming PC in each room, a laptop in each room, and even if you don't have a computer, your smartphone is already a computer and everyone owns that. So yeah, and we had social media back then, message boards, forums, you know, like I remember in elementary school, people would ask each other if they have a MySpace and I had no idea what that was in, in elementary school, but apparently it was a social media and being addicted to social media was pretty rare back then. It was not common just because we still had our priorities. We go on there for like an hour or so and we could get off and do other things. That's just how it was. It's not like nowadays where being terminally online is common, it's bad, being addicted. Like being addicted to video games has always been a thing, but being addicted to social media has been way more common now compared to the 2000s because we were just too busy like living and pretty much getting our priorities straight, you know? There was always a balance of everything. Now, I guess social media was, you know, I guess they, it's part of our everyday lives to this point, And it's just gone to the point where it's just taken over our lives just because we aren't properly like controlling ourselves pretty much. I like the idea of social media, don't get me wrong, but like if it's for jobs or if you're an artist, you want to spread your art out there, you want to communicate with other people around the world, that's cool. But it's gotten to a point where people just make social me media their whole lives and it's just bizarre, you know? Like, it's crazy. But yeah, I know this is like a long introduction video or whatever, or introduction segment, but yeah, I guess I'm consider I like to consider myself as a zillennial rather than a zoomer. And I was born in 97, so technically I was a 90s baby because I was a baby in the 90s, but I don't get to remember um, everything, obviously, in, in the 90s. But by the time the 2000s hit, okay, by the time 2001 hit, I, sh I would start to remember things. Like I remember preschool and stuff like that. But other than that, yeah. So for this segment, I guess we'll just talk about toys and just entertainment in general. Like I said, I don't know if kids play with toys these days, and if they do, they probably have to be really young or toddler. Uh, according to other people, I hear that, you know, they're on tablets and stuff, and it's one of the reasons why stores like Toys R Us did not adapt, and they ended up failing, even though Toys R Us made a comeback, kind of. But if they don't have their brick and mortar store or their standalone store in the United States, I still consider them dead. But yeah, and I guess I want to say uh, what you see right here is uh, 2006 Lego Batman Batmobile. This is the Batmobile from 2006. This minifigure is from 2006. And I was nine years old when, when this came out and I loved this toy a lot. I remember seeing the commercials back then. And I remember getting this and playing this a lot. This was awesome. So, yeah, it's a little dusty, pardon me about that. But I was never a big Lego guy, you know. But once I found out that Lego had the license to do Batman, I was invested. I was interested. So, because a lot of the other Lego stuff, I think my brother, my younger brother, was more into. You know, like Lego Knight's Kingdom, uh, Bionicle. I, I never got into that. So... And, but I do remember a lot of their Lego City commercials, you know, the, the ones that people make memes of, like a man fell into, uh, what is it, a river in Lego City, something like that, but, but yeah, when it comes to Lego, I personally loved Lego during this era, it was just really cool, and considering about this Batman, growing up in the early 2000s, before 2005, okay, before Christian Bale hit the screen, or start as Batman and Batman Begins, during the early 2000s, let's say 2001s to 2004, the only Batman movies we had were the four Batman movies with 
Keaton, Val Kilmer, and George Clooney. And I grew up with those movies before, you know, like being exposed to the Dark Knight trilogy that we know, you know, from Christopher Nolan. Batman Begins, The Dark Knight. Dark Knight Rises is in more of the 2010s era, so when it came to the 2000s, it was Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. But, yeah. But this one, um, this was more in... In line, this Batmobile was more inspired by the Tim Burton Batmobile. So, the Michael Keaton Batman movie. So, yeah. This was one of the toys I played with, I love. I was always more of an action figure guy. I, I never got into, like, other toys, like Nerf guns. We played with lightsabers. The Star Wars prequels were awesome at the time. I know um, people had their criticisms of the movies, but I enjoyed them. And... Um, it's it made Star Wars relevant and popular, you know. It's not like now when Disney has the, you know, the control or, of Star Wars or Disney has the rights to Star Wars, where Star Wars has become irrelevant or pointless just because all their projects, their their shows or whatever, have been flops or or poorly written or whatever. But at least the prequels, they were pretty big in the two thousands. Okay, like. Playing with lightsabers, playing with Star Wars toys, those little three-inch uh, Star Wars toys, I, I loved as a kid. Lego Star Wars was also a big thing in the 2000s, too. Not just the video games, but even the sets. I, and my brother was also into that. But I was more of an action figure guy, and the only Lego stuff I was into was Batman. And as you guys can see here, this is more of a modern Tobey Maguire action figure. This came out... Pretty much this year, 2023 by Hasbro, where you can have a, you can, it comes with the head and a couple hands where you can swap heads. But the reason why I put Toby in here, even though this costume is based on his No Way Home look, I bring up Toby because Toby was a big part of my childhood. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie pretty much like shaped the generation, okay? If I'm going to exaggerate it. That movie shaped the generation just because it was my first movie theater experience. It was my first cinema experience. Me stepping foot into a movie theater was because of the first uh, Raimi Spider-Man movie. I was five years old in 2002 when that film came out and I was so blown away and I was so obsessed with Tobey Maguire and just Spider-Man in general. And Spider-Man became my favorite superhero. So, yeah, like I had... Way back when Spider-Man 2 came out, I had the Toy Biz uh, Super Posable Spider-Man figure, which goes for a lot of money right now. And, you know, I had that figure then when it was $7.99. It was $7.99 from what I remember back in the 2000s. And I played with this so much to the point he fell apart and he broke. And, you know, toys are meant to be played with. I, I will say I wish I took better care of it if I had... The power to time travel, I guess. I would remind myself or tell myself that, hey, take better care of that figure. It, it will go for a lot of money. And I'm not buying stuff to to make an investment or whatever. It's just, it's better to just take care of stuff. But still, I just have this newer Tobey Maguire figure. And you know how much this costs? This costs $24.99. An action figure costs $24.99 compared to $7.99 back in the day. And I get it, you can say, oh, it's inflation or whatever, but sometimes corporate greed um, has a part in it too. So yeah, but like I said, Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, you know, he's my Spider-Man. He'll always be my Spider-Man, even though nowadays Andrew Garfield is objectively my Spider-Man just because I loved Andrew Garfield's movies when they were out, when everyone was shitting on it. And Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man just reflected the comics I grew up with, or read, which were the 90s and 2000s. But Toby, you know, Toby was my first exposure to Spider-Man. He'll always have a special place in my heart. Those movies, like, I enjoy them to this day. But yeah, even though this is a modern figure, it's not really a figure from the 2000s. But still, I just had to have a Toby in there. You can't really talk about the 2000s unless you bring up uh, Spider-Man. But yeah um when it comes to other entertainment like cartoons and stuff uh you know nickelodeon was a big part of my childhood along with
Cartoon Network. Those two were the biggest parts of my childhood. I just never cared for Disney. I was never a Disney guy growing up. The only time, the only reason I paid attention to Disney now is because they own Star Wars and Marvel. But if they never owned Star Wars and Marvel, I would have never paid attention to Disney. I'm just saying. I never, like, cared for Disney Channel. Like, the only shows I've watched from Disney Channel was Zack and Cody, but I never cared for that show. I, I just never found it funny. And, um, Recess. I, I really enjoyed Recess. But other than that, never cared for the other stuff, you know? People talked about Even Stevens, uh, That's So Raven, stuff like that. I, I don't know. I, I could never hold a conversation about Disney stuff because I never watched it. But when it comes to Nickelodeon, I do enjoy Nickelodeon. Um, and pretty much right here sums it up. I know there's some exceptions like Angry Beavers, i never seen that. Ren and Stimpy, never seen that. Rocco's Modern Life, never seen that. I don't know what this is. I guess it's the Monsters or something like that. Never seen that either. But everything else like Cat Dog, Wild Thornberries, Rocket Power, Hey Arnold, Invader Zim, SpongeBob, and, and Rugrats, and Hey Arnold, and uh, and Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom. Even there's some of their live action stuff like Drake and Josh and Ned's The Classified. Love that. Love just Jordan too. Uh, iCarly I never cared for. I thought iCarly was way too over the top and cringy back then. I know cringy has lost its meaning, but I could never get into iCarly. I do like the revival though, just because it's a more tolerable show to watch. It wasn't as over the top as it was back then but yeah and that's kind of what it was in the 2000s for Nickelodeon for Cartoon Network there was just so many shows to name off of but Ed and Eddie is my favorite Cartoon Network show of all time it's hands down my favorite okay like I don't think we'll ever get a cartoon like Ed and Eddie ever again and we had other shows too, like Justice League Unlimited. Justice League Unlimited is my favorite comic book show of all time. My favorite uh, DC um, TV series. And then you have Static Shock, uh, you know, Cowboy Bebop, Adult Swim, stuff like that. And then this Cowboy Bebop movie came, you know, released in the early 2000s. And even though the show was aired, the show itself aired in the late 90s. But like I said, a lot of stuff in the 90s overlapped in the 2000s. Hey Arnold, uh, Spongebob of course, and Saint, uh, the Spider-Man trilogy, and Marvel movies, okay? Marvel movies hit different um, now, or I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm just saying Marvel, the Marvel movies from the 2000s hit different now, and I'm not going to act like they're masterpieces or they became good all of a sudden. A lot of Marvel movies in the 2000s were hits and misses, but... Every time I go back to them, I seem to be enjoying them more than the current state of the MCU. But still, we had Ben Affleck's Daredevil. We had the Fantastic Four movies with Jessica Alba and Chris Evans. We had uh, both Hulk movies, okay? We had the Eric Bana Hulk movie and The Incredible Hulk, which is the early part of the MCU, which released in the late 2000s. Uh, we had Iron Man, of course, early parts of the MCU. Uh, of course, the Spider-Man movies. And stuff like that, you know. Uh, other movies, I guess animated movies like Ice Age, Shrek, uh, and just other movies in general like Men in Black. And I know this is the trilogy. The third movie was part of the 2010s. Uh, the first movie was late 90s, I believe, and the second movie was early 2000s. Uh, same with Pierce Brosnan. This is like the reoccurring theme of this video because a lot of stuff in the 90s bled into into the 2000s like uh pierce brosnan is my james bond okay like i like i thought daniel craig was fine but i never really cared for his movies i my favorite bond movies were always pierce brosnan and i even like die another day i know a lot of people might not enjoy it but i did a uh, rush hour um trilogy i don't think we'll ever get a movie series like this again i heard they're making a rush hour four but i don't think it'll be as good as um, the trilogy and even Rush Hour 3 as it is is kind of meh but yeah the Harry Potter movies Harry Potter movies and Lord Lord of the Ring movies were event movies before the MCU okay 
They were pretty much, and Star Wars movies were also event movies, at least the prequels, before the sequel trilogy and stuff like that. So, and then we had the the Batman TV series, Transformers. Okay, Transformers. The first Transformers movie, I was blown away with the first Transformers movie because just seeing these robots transform for the first time in live action was one of the craziest things I've ever seen, okay? I know when each movie came along, it loses its appeal, but the first Transformers movie, sure, with its plot holes and and its issues, it was still an, an amazing experience to watch. Even Revenge of the Fallen, okay? I know people talk about how messed up the jokes and humor was in Revenge of the Fallen, but when I was in the theater, everybody was having a good time, laughing our asses off. It was a good escape, you know, from reality. So, there's that. And then you have the Tomb Raider movies with Angelina Jolie. As movies themselves, they're fine. But as an adaptation from the actual video games, they're not that great. Same with the Resident Evil movies, okay? The Resident Evil movies weren't really that great either. But as movies themselves, they were fine. But yeah, those are like a handful of movies, TV shows, entertainment, and stuff like that. And I guess the next segment, we'll talk about video games. Oh, and before I talk about video games, I have to talk about, you know, VHS, VCR stuff. When it comes to VHS tapes, I've owned um, a handful of them. Like, I had, obviously, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 1 on VHS tape, uh, the 1998 Godzilla movie. Uh, Pierce Brosnan's um, James Bond movie was The World Is Not Enough. And then a couple of other stuff, you know, for like kids, you know, for me growing up, like Power Rangers, like um, Power Rangers. I own the VHS tapes for Power Rangers Wild Force and Ninja Storm, even though my favorite seasons for Power Rangers is has been Lost Galaxy, Lightspeed Rescue, and Time Force. Those three were my favorites. But... But yeah, um, and the other, I'm trying to think, a bunch of VHS tapes. I remember owning one of the Land Before Time movies on VHS, but like I said, that's kind of more, I want to say 90s, at least the sequels, because I own the third sequel of Land Before Time on VHS. I don't know if that was the 80s or 90s, but still, uh, stuff like that, and yeah, so... There you go. And, oh, and I also own Batman Forever on VHS as well, but... But now let's talk about video games. For video games, um, I grew up with the PS1, and I'm surprised I still have these memory cards. And I believe this one is for the PS1 as well, but this one for sure, just because obviously the color. But, yeah, the PS1 was the very first console I owned, and one of my first games on that console were, um... What was it? Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, Spyro Year of the Dragon, which is also a third game, Tekken 3, another third sequel, and Spider-Man 2000. And then I had a couple of other PS1 games as well, like Digimon Rumble Arena, I think. Uh, I had a demo disc too, and I remember on the demo disc, Tomb Raider 3 was on there, and I had no idea how to play that game, and I always, or play the demo. I had no idea how to play it, and I would always get myself killed. But yeah, uh, there were other games. X-Men Mutant Academy, stuff like that on the PS1. And having a PS1 was awesome, and I had the bigger PS1, okay? And my younger brother had the smaller PS1 where it came with the controller with the analog sticks because the bigger PS1 console has no analog sticks on it, or no joyst joysticks, but... Yeah, the PS1 was my first console, and I have been a PlayStation kid ever since, until now. Like, for example, I owned the PS2, owned the PS3, owned the PSP at one point, and the PS4. I never owned the PS Vita, and I still do not own a PS5. So, and I'm currently a PC gamer, okay? I became a PC gamer during the pandemic, so, or during the end of 2019 heading into 2020 so i guess right now i'm currently a pc gamer and I, I don't think i can go back to a console to be honest but for the longest time i was a playstation kid and 
this is like a third party memory card for the PS2 and you guys can see more memory cards on the PS2. And yeah, and I, I will throw up images of uh, the video games I played growing up like GTA San Andreas, uh, Bully, um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, uh, Sly 2, or Sly, any of the Sly Cooper games, okay? Uh, we owned an Xbox 360 at one point too during the late 2000s. We, I remember playing Halo 3. Halo 3 was like one of my favorite games during that time. And uh, the Tomb Raider stuff, you know, during the PS2 era was it Tomb Raider Legend, Tomb Raider Anniversary, and Tomb Raider Underworld. Like, really fun games, and yeah, and I guess near the late 2000s, or 2009, we had Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham Asylum, which to me is still my favorite Batman Arkham game to this day. I just love the atmosphere, the immersion. It, it, to me, it's better than the sequels. I know it's a hot take, but yeah, and I loved gaming during the 2000s because while G gaming in the 2000s might be primitive, at least the video games themselves might be primitive, but they were the most creative. We had like almost every genre you could think of in terms of video games. We had a lot of licensed games, a lot of movie tie-ins and stuff like that, you know? Like this household and the old house I used to live in, we were the PlayStation households while my friends were more Xbox and Nintendo and all that. So I still get to visit, or well not these days, but back then when I was a kid we would visit our friend's house to play the GameCube, to play the Wii, to play the original Xbox. And we, and we had our own 360 at the time too, so... But yeah, like, gaming back then was really fun, really nostalgic, and just the idea of video games, they don't need to be super complex like it is now, they don't need to be graphically technical like it is now, like, and then especially with installing updates and installing drivers or whatever, like, in terms of the console, right? Like, back then, we would buy a physical game, plug in and play, you know, put the disc in, oops. Put the disc in and uh, play the video games. I got too excited there, but yeah, stuff like that. And then now, uh, physical media is on a decline. I think, and and as you guys can see here, DVDs and Blu-rays they're on a decline because apparently Walmart and Best Buy don't want to sell physical media anymore. And then video games, they're heading towards that digital route. As a PC gamer. I mean, we're going to have to play games digitally anyways. There's really no point in getting a physical media of a PC game. But when it comes to consoles, you can still get them. They're, they just don't happen as often as it was back then. You know, which I prefer. I hate how a lot of video games these days are released unfinished and they always have to get patched up later down the road. To me, that is straight up lazy and a lot of video games get announced too early and you wait too long, the hype dies, and then by the time it releases, it fucking sucks. I know a lot of people say, oh, when developers take their time, the game should be good, but no one ever stops to think what happens if they did take their time, but the game still sucks, right? That seems to be the state of gaming these days. <laughs> okay, microtransactions, shit like that. Mobile games, I remember mobile games on like those slide up phones or whatever. They used to just be something to pass the time. They weren't something like to rob from your fucking wallet or your bank account or whatever, you know? Microtransactions and stuff like that. Just gaming back then was just fun and they can be addicting, okay? Gaming back then, it was, sim it was a simpler time it wasn't too complex. Nowadays, everything has to be complex. The controls are complex. The graphical or technicality of the video game is complex. The user interface, you know, the me main menu has become complex for no apparent reason. And we don't get a lot of licensed games anymore. We don't get movie tie-in games. And sure, people meme on movie tie-in games, but we had some bangers, you know, like Spider-Man 2. Uh, I enjoyed games like 
you know, Superman Returns. It was a jank game, but I still managed to have fun with it. Batman Begins had the tie-in game. Pretty much any superhero movie in the 2000s had, you know, tie-in games. Uh, even games that shouldn't have a video game, but they did. Like, Drake and Josh. I know it's not on PS2 or whatever. It was like on Game Boy or something like that. Game Boy and DS. But still, Drake and Josh got a video game. We don't get stuff like that now, okay? Ed and Eddie had a video game. You know, on the Game Boy and uh, the PS2. So, yeah, it's just stuff like that. Like, we don't get that anymore. Now everything has to be AAA. I don't really like a lot of the Sony, you know, first party titles or whatever, just because in a sense, when you play the game, it's only like a one and done experience. It doesn't really have the replay value. And if it does, it's mostly, oh, let's 100% the game and it's over. But the story of the games, I mean, it, it depends on the game you're playing. So for example, Uncharted, to me, those are a one and done for me. God of War, those games are one and done. You know, Last of Us, one and done. Uh, I will say Spider-Man, I had multiple playthroughs just because it's Spider-Man, okay? The Insomniacs, Spider-Man. But other than that, yeah. Um, and multiplayer, I felt like the PS3 and the uh, Xbox 360 era was like the best era for online multiplayer. Of course, you know, those Xbox kids throwing out slurs and all that. I, I know it's bad or whatever, but it was fun at the time, you know? It was like, it was all fun in games. It wasn't that serious, and if it was, you could always report them or whatever. And, but that's just how it is way back when, you know, in the 2000s. It was a much more simpler time. And I know that's such a cliche thing to say, but that's just how it is. <laughs> you know, I can't really describe it more. And I guess I'll just throw in other stuff in life, like, I assume finding jobs, applying for jobs was easier back then. I, like, quitting your job and finding a new one, I assume it's easier back in the 2000s compared to now. Like, a lot of people are stuck in one place at their miserable jobs because it's not easy finding a new one. Uh, college, I assume college was more fun in the 2000s, you know? Going to the mall. Going to the mall was fun in the 2000s. Sure, it's on a decline, but going to the mall. GameStop was pretty cool in the 2000s, at least as kids, <laughs> you know. But now GameStop is just GameStop, I guess. <laughs> but stuff like that, like, everything just seems so difficult and complex and annoying these days. I assume dating was easier back in the 2000s compared to now, but still, whatever, right? And I'm trying to think what else is there to bring up the 2000s. Prices on things, okay? Prices on food. Uh, fast food would probably did taste better back then compared to now. Uh, stuff like that. A lot of commercials. Commercials from the 2000s were pretty fun, whether it's toy commercials, uh, you know, video game commercials, anything like that. Even infomercials, they were more entertaining back then than it was now. Or even in 2010s. I remember watching some old 2010s commercials and they weren't really that great. They're just there, you know. <laughs> they, they don't leave an impression on you. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. But other than that, yeah. I guess we'll... Try to close this off, this whole video off. And since we're gonna close this video off, um, when it comes to world events and politics, I know it isn't a 2000s video unless you bring up 9-11, right? And yes, it really did change America. And you know, this whole video isn't just uh, the good times and stuff like that. You, you have to take the good and the bad. And 9-11 did change America. And But the thing is, I was only four at the time. And I was living in the West Coast. I live in California, okay? So I don't know how much it really affected me. I was just a kid at the time. The only time I knew I was aware that 9-11 was a thing or existed is when I got older into middle school. So that was like, what? Like... 
11 years old, I want to say, 11 to 12 years old in sixth grade, that we paid our tributes or our respects to those who have fallen in 9-11. But other than that, like I said, it only affects the people who were there or know someone who were there. So, yeah, I can't really speak much on it, but it was an important event. But every generation or decade has those kinds of, you know, unfortunate events. That's just how it is, unfortunately. And as for politics, I'm not really a political person, so, and I don't care which side you're on in terms of the political spectrum. All I ask of you guys is not to be a dick, don't be an asshole, and that's pretty much it, you know? But when it comes to politics and or media or entertainment or whatever, back then, when, when it's implemented in our movies or TV shows or video games, they were more subtle about it. It was always more, in my opinion, an afterthought where, oh, if someone wants to send a message about something or insert their politics into a movie's story or message from the entertainment, it was just subtle. It was just something to think about. It wasn't that serious. It wasn't a lecture. It wasn't what it is now when it comes to implementing politics into our entertainment and even then I feel like the politics in our en entertainment now is just chalked up to just bad writing in my opinion. I don't really think it's the politics themselves that are bad. I think it's just bad writing in general in my opinion. Back then we had good writing, you know? We had stuff, you know, lessons that were taught to us as kids in cartoons like Static Shock was one of them, you know? Imagine they made a new Static Shock show. I don't think it would survive the uh, society. Oh, my bad. It doesn't, I don't think Static Shock would survive in a society that we are in. I think a lot of people are gonna criticize Static as a character, saying he's a woke character or he's pandering or whatever. It's like, I don't know. Like I said, it doesn't matter which political spectrum you're on. Left, right, doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, it's nothing. It doesn't change the world, you know. You have people on the internet who makes politics, like, their personality. Especially, we know some people in our lives where they never talked about politics before and all of a sudden, they're, they're all about politics and it's just insane, but... In the 2000s, you know, there were discussions, debates, or whatever, but we just moved on, you know? Just live life. And, but nowadays, people have made politics their personalities, like, which, to me, is kind of weird. Unless you were, you know, you're majoring in politics. If you're the type of person who majors in politics, cool. You know, you have every right to do what you want. But everyone else who's like a normie or whatever, but then they try to get into politics, it's just weird, you know? But... But back then, it wasn't the case in the 2000s. Th that's the point I'm trying to make. And even if it was, we still moved on, you know? Life is for the living and shit, <laughs> right? But other than that, that's pretty much it. That That's pretty much that aspect of the whole world events and politics. I'm trying so hard not to get into it because it doesn't really matter. I mean, it does matter, but in the grand scheme of things, whatever, right? Like, I thought about leaving this part out, but I feel like somebody's gonna bring this up or mention it, so... Yeah. But other than that, that's just my take on the 2000s. I'm pretty sure I, I've missed some stuff, but you guys can um, mention it, if, or you guys can comment below if I have the comments on, because usually I turn off my comments once, you know, a couple weeks or months pass just because. But other than that, that's really it. That's my video about the 2000s reminiscing, missing stuff. You know, how the 2000s were great. But just like anything in life, just uh, live life like, like it's your last, I guess. And you make the best of it and you shouldn't dwell on the past. Even though I'm, basically I'm making a video dwelling on the past. But it's just a video. It just serves as a time capsule, basically. And just give my thoughts and experiences if I put any out there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys next time.
Oh, I know I said I just closed the video off and I told you guys I'll see you next time. Consider this segment as an epilogue. I forgot to bring up uh, the recession, okay? Way back in the late 2000s. I forgot about the recession for a minute there. But other than that, that's just something just to add on to the last segment that I made. And I forgot to bring up, you know, the downfall of the 2000s, the 2009. I think 2009 was my worst year. I know some people said everything went downhill by the time it hits 2006. Some people say, oh, it's, it was 2007 for them. Some would say 2008. For me, it was 2009 just because I moved, you know, as a kid, you know, 12 years old. I moved to a different area, you know, moved to a different school, trying to get adjusted to my new life, making new friends, starting from the bottom and up. Yeah, it sucked. Uh, 2009, I think a lot of deaths, you know, uh, that happened, like Brittany Murphy, uh, Billy Mays, Michael Jackson, stuff like that. A lot of deaths occurred. I think Patrick Swayze also died in 2009. I, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And yeah, 2009 was one of the worst years ever. We had movies like Dragon Ball Evolution, okay? X-Men Origins Wolverine. Even though I enjoyed X-Men Origins Wolverine when it was out. Loved the tie-in video game too. But yeah, 2009, not really that great of a year. I like, but still, um, it is what it is. Uh, I still have my love for the 2000s and if I were to do anything I would uh, I would love to go back and experience the 2000s but as a teenager or maybe as a young adult I just want to experience where I would be as a teenager or a young adult because I was just a kid in the 2000s I did not become a teenager or become 13 until the 2010s you know pretty much 20 2010. I turned 13 and I became a teenager. So I would love to experience the 2000s as a teenager or as an adult. I know some people would say, oh, I would time travel back and relive the 2000s again, you know, as a kid and make different choices or whatever. But no, I already experienced it as a kid. I would love to experience the 2000s as a teenager or a young adult. Pretty much my age now, okay? I'm 26 right now. I, I, I would be curious what life would be like in the 2000s as a a teenager or a young adult in my 20s but still stuff like that and there were probably other things I missed on uh, the advancement of technology I still think technology is useful in terms of GPS I know um, GPS and maps on our phones has been common these days but back then in the 2000s that was never the case not every car had a GPS and we would use websites like MapQuest or we would print out a map or get a map to go to our destinations you know <laughs> like a physical map paper map to get to our destinations but nowadays it's a lot simpler to drive around and use our GPS or our maps on our phones so there's a positive in that. If you want to give your child a head start in education, there's also a positive in that in terms of technology. I'm not the type of guy who shits on technology, but just like anything, we lose, you know, our self-control or our balance and pretty much, yeah, and we pretty much abuse it, you know, or we make our whole lives on the internet, even though basically I'm using the internet myself or using social media or whatever. But I try to like not be terminally online, you know. Not that I am, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. This is pretty much an epilogue. Uh, I just wanted to get this video out here, out there before the end of the year. And yeah, so there you go.